Danielle, just count to five. One, two, three, four, Well, hello, Hofstra fans, and I'm Stephen Gorchov, the Associate Director of Athletics for Communications here at Hofstra, and I'd like to welcome everyone to our next uh, Q&A. Uh, today, we're thrilled to be joined by head women's basketball coach, Danielle Santos-Atkinson. Coach, welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Well, it's great to have you on. Uh, let's start off. Uh, how are you doing? How is your family doing? How's everybody holding, holding up right now? Uh, everyone's holding up well. Uh, obviously, you know, and it's 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 not an ideal situation or ideal time, and and a, and a lot of people are 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 going through some tough situations. But everybody is healthy uh, in our house and and maintaining as we as we work from home. Yeah. Uh, again, Hofstra fans, welcome to the, our Q and A with head women's basketball coach Danielle Santos Atkinson. If you have questions for coach. Put them in the uh, chat window on the YouTube page, and we'll get to them uh, during the chat. Uh, it, it's got to be interesting. We talked off it, off camera before. You have uh, two young children. What's it uh, been like uh, seeing every every step, every movement, every uh, every single thing you could possibly ever dream of seeing of your children? You're getting to see right now, right? Yeah, you get to see it live and up front, and especially. My seven month old, um, every day, every week, every month, they change so much. Um, and even our three year old London, uh, in a few weeks time, they're whole new babies, whole new toddlers, uh, and being able to see those milestones reached uh, and being able to see all the, all the things that they're doing firsthand all day, every day uh, has been really rewarding as a parent and, and a lot of fun to, to see. 
So, uh, Danielle, let's let's get into uh, the Q and A here again. Hofstra fans, if you have questions, uh, put them in the chat window on the YouTube page, and we'll get to them. Uh, it was just over a year you were named the head coach here at Hofstra. I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, April 13th off the top of my head, uh, and it's now May 6th. Uh, what's what's the uh, year plus a couple weeks been like for you here at Hofstra on the uh, the second go round? Yeah, uh, the first year was great. It, it, it was, it was uh, so much uh, wrapped into one year uh, and some things that you'd never expect to, to have to see or, or endure in your first year. Um, but overall, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, as I always say, I love being back at Hofstra, uh, because, mostly because of the people. Really, really enjoy every single person here at Hofstra and the program, the atmosphere and the environment that's created. Uh, but in our first year, I, I had a, a blast getting to know our girls uh, and starting to develop and build the foundation of the program. And when you talk about that foundation, you, you've talked about it a lot. You talked about on that, that opening press conference, what you wanted to, how you wanted to build this program. Uh, how have you begun to lay those, those pieces uh, as part of that foundation in, in the first year? Uh, for us, we, we wanted the, the team and the, and the players on our team to understand that we were going to, uh, as a program, we we're going to work as hard as we can every single day. And our goal was to get better each day uh, than we were the day before. Uh, and there's, there's things that we knew we had to develop within our team. Uh, there's things we knew we had to make sure uh, we could do and, and make sure uh, everybody was on the same page and the things that we were believing in. And we did that every single day, no matter the circumstance, no matter uh, the events going on, we made sure to stick to our values and to stick to our principles of the program and everything we did in, in every single day. And so that was tough for us because you, it, we have long-term goals that, that we want to accomplish. Uh, and there's, there's the short-term goals and the, and the process and the journey that we're on uh, and, and understanding how that works as you continue to build a program. Uh, was at times got tough. And so for our girls, just keeping that in perspective and, and helping them understand what it was and where it was that we were going as we stuck to the consistency and the things that we were doing every single day. Um, I think that definitely helped us uh, get great footing as we move on to the second year. And you, you talk about the goals and obviously uh, wins and losses are the wins are the ultimate goal. Uh, how do you train your student athletes and the women on your team to see other goals, uh, whether you're UConn winning a national title or you taking over a program, how do you teach them to see other aspects and other goals and, and train them that you've reached a goal uh, that may not involve even playing a game, that might be something off the court? Yeah, there were so many wins. We call them wins uh, this year that we had as a program, but they didn't show up in that win-loss column, as you said. Uh, we wanna see the small successes that we're in the small goals that we're trying to reach each and every day. So for us, we know it's we know it's a process. Uh, we actually read the book Chop Wood Carry Water, which was which was great for our program, and it talked about a lot of the lessons in that. But doing the same thing uh, over and over again every single day uh, gets gets old and it gets boring. But knowing that we're working towards a process, so a lot of our small victories and our small successes this year came in. Uh, seeing that consistency. Can we put together two, three, four practices uh, together in a row that we would consider good practices? Can we go out and, and there's a specific area of the game that we're trying to work on, whether it's our mental toughness or whether it's um, something specific as defensively or offensively. Uh, and in this game that we have coming up, though, again, it may not show up in the win-loss column, but how can we achieve those small success and those small goals in those areas and those portions of the game? Uh, so we really broke down the season, broke down the games, broke down our practices in that way so that we were reaching our, reaching our small goals and having small successes throughout this year. Did you see your team buy into the, to what you guys called the wins and the other uh, small goals? Yes. And, and that was one of the things that I was unbelievably proud of. Uh, of this team every single day they came back again no matter the circumstance we knew we had to practice no matter the circumstance and practice well uh, we knew we had to have energy and be excited about the process and what we were doing regardless of the circumstance regardless of the outcome of the game the day before uh, regardless of how they were feeling about the game in two days 
we knew we had a job to do for that day. Uh, and this team continued to rise to that expectation and rise to that level, rise to the challenge uh, every single time. And they did that with, with such good energy and such good enthusiasm. Um, it, again, regardless of the circumstance throughout the year, I was really proud of the way they battled and continued to fight. Uh, and the only way you can do that is if you have a vision of where we're headed and a vision of where we're going. And I thought they really bought into that uh, and continued uh, every single day to come back and, and be on board with what it is that we were doing because they knew that all of it was working towards, uh, again, what we're saying is our long-term goal and building that foundation. Yeah, I was amazed watching your team all season, uh, particularly non-game days, the energy and enthusiasm and the emotion that they were showing every day uh, in practices was it's really credit obviously to you and your coaching staff but really a credit to the student athletes they uh they brought it every day no matter uh what was on their mind off the court or uh in games yes 100 percent. i agree well uh again hobster fans if you have questions for coach santos atkinson put them in the chat window on the youtube page and we'll get to them uh we have a few right now coach so we're uh we'll uh, bring them in here uh let's go uh nathan wants to know what has been your strategy for recruiting while not being able to have anybody on campus? Great question. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that we sat down and discussed as a staff, if we cannot get uh, you know, recruits to Hofstra, how do we take Hofstra to them? Um, and that's been, that's been discussions for us. Um, and, and how do we take Hofstra and the household of, of these recruits? And so we every single day we're on the phone. Uh, we're talking to coaches. We're talking to uh, players. We're, uh, we're talking to student athletes that we think can come in here and, and help our program. Uh, and we've done that in a variety of ways. And, and we've had to get really creative. And the whole landscape of recruiting has changed and what that looks like. Um, and I think we, we've done a great job um, in making sure that we stayed in the minds of, of all of our student athletes, stayed in the forefront of their minds. Um, and again, look to expand and develop those relationships the best that we can uh, during this time. Yeah, and have you, have you felt like you guys have succeeded in that area? Obviously everybody's in the same boat. So it's kind of a, everybody's learning uh, day by day in, this, in the situation we're in. Yes, I, I do. I, I think we have uh, definitely, we've got some great newcomers that are gonna be coming on board with us this next year. Um, and we've done a great job of really diving in to that following class as well. There's a great, you know, there's a great group of juniors out there um, and, and some that we really feel can, can help our program. Uh, and I think we've done a great job. I, I definitely have to give credit to Camille Collier. Uh, she's, she's put together a plan for us uh, that's, that's helped us, I believe, move forward uh, in our recruiting process and, and definitely creating an, create an environment and an atmosphere uh, where those recruits feel they can still have and develop those relationships uh, and still feel as though they've received all the necessary information on Hofstra uh, visually uh, and as well as verbally in making a decision uh, to attend or not attend. Yeah, it's got, it's got to just be an interesting whole new world right now. Uh, let's go to our next question from Ken. Uh, Ken has a 13-year-old uh, daughter. Uh, she, they'd like some advice for what they should watch when they come to Hofstra games to help her grow as a player. Great question. Yeah, that's great. Uh, as much as we do on the basketball floor, I think one of the things that's always great to, to help grow and develop, which is one thing that we're always looking for and watching for as collegiate coaches is how do they react during tough situations? Um, and so how does, a, how does a player respond during tough situations? How does, how does a player uh, respond when things are going really well? Uh, what kind of teammates are they being on the floor, off the floor, on the bench? Uh, what type of excitement what kind of excitement are they bringing to the game? Um, and then also what I, what I want us to be known for as a program and as a team uh, is one of the hardest working teams in the CAA. And so anybody that comes and watches our team and our program, I want them to see a work ethic unlike any other uh, and an excitement uh, and a passion surrounding what it is that they're doing on the floor. Yeah, that's great. Great advice uh, for, for somebody growing up and wanting to be a college basketball player. Again, Hofstra fans, if you have questions for coach, uh, put them in the chat window on the YouTube page and we'll get to them. Actually, here's one, another one for you, coach, that I was not aware of this. So you'll have to uh, confirm this. Is it true? Uh, Hofstra fan Andrew Cohen asked, how did you become a Patriots fan? And which is the favorite of your six Super Bowl wins? 
Um, yes, I am. My family are diehard Patriot fans, um, and we always we always have been. Um, we are originally from Boston. Um, I didn't live there very long, but prior to moving down south, um, but my family is through and through uh, Patriot fans, and you know it, it's just been fun watching this this postseason and this this. Uh, the, the development of the team, but that has not changed whatsoever uh, our heart and, and what it is that, that we love and enjoy about the Patriot program. You have a uh, favorite Super Bowl, Andrew wanted to know. Anytime they win a Super Bowl is, is a favorite, I will say that, um, and, and a celebration for us. And uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Tom Brady and Gronk uh, moving down to Tampa Bay? I mean, it's definitely a tough one, um, but I'll say, as my dad said the other day, my husband's a diehard Falcons fan, so he gives us a hard time. Um, but as my dad told him the other day, he is a player, not a team. And so we still support and back our team, although those are, those are tough pieces to lose. Good, great words. Uh, let's continue with the questions from the chat. There's a few more rolling in. Uh, oh, one of your fellow Hofstra head coaches has uh, chimed in. Coach uh, Vince Giambanco of our uh, track and cross country program. Uh, oh, I want to know the answer to this too. Have you been watching the Last Dance documentary? I have been watching the Last Dance documentary. We do not miss it. We are there, front row and center, um, every single time it comes on, and it has been. I, I love it. I mean, it's been so good to watch the girls, uh, the players on our team. We have our group chat, and throughout the program, we're we're texting in different takeaways and different quotes. Uh, that we pick up throughout the throughout the documentary, and I think it's been great. Uh, here's a second part of his question: uh, If yes, which is the yes, what do you think your uh, student athletes can learn from Michael Jordan and that Chicago Bulls team? Uh, definitely their their toughness, their competitiveness, and the passion that they had for what it is that they do. Uh, their no excuse mentality, uh, regardless of what was happening off the floor, on the floor, they always came together for one common goal, uh, and that was to win and win a championship. Yeah, and uh, again, obviously they were an incredibly successful team, but they literally refused to lose. No mm -hmm. matter what they were doing, whether they were playing a game on the airplane or they were playing a basketball game in the NBA finals, they just refused to lose, and that's what successful programs do. Uh, Again, Hofstra fans, if you have questions for Coach Santos Atkinson, put them in the YouTube chat window and we'll get to them. Um, we'll continue with a couple more. And then the last one from Vince, uh, he this is a little humorous. Uh, who do you think would win in a game of one-on-one, -on -one, him or Richie Nuttall? Ooh, that would definitely be a tough one. I think Vince has the some agility and some speed and quickness. I think Richie's IQ uh, and his, definitely his patience and how he sees and views the game on the floor would be tough. Um, but I think Richie by two. Wow, you uh, you broke that down a little better than I actually thought you were going to break that down. <laughs> you had, it's almost like you've been asked it before. Uh, Michaela wants to know if you could give your middle school self advice for how to prepare for playing at the highest possible level, what would it be? Uh, definitely work on your craft as much as you can and have fun with it. I think that those are the two things. Um, they, they go hand in hand and you can't do one without the other if you're looking to be the best. And so as much as you can work on your game, uh, but at the same time, make sure you enjoy it and that you have fun in that process uh, and continue to get and continue to get better. So you, uh, your college uh, career uh, was at University of Florida. You were highly successful. Uh, what, what was it about playing at that level that you thought maybe helped you shape you to become a coach? Uh, I think playing, playing at that level, it, it was definitely uh, a drive uh, for sure to be your best and, and not at just that level, but just playing collegiate basketball and in general, uh, the drive to be your best in that, that push to make sure uh, from our coaching staff that we were able to reach our potential. Um, and I think that that piece and being able to take that and not only use that as a player on the floor, but also use that as a life lesson for me as, as driven me to be a coach. I absolutely love the relationships that uh, was formed when I was in college with our staff. Uh, I love the impact that they had on my life, uh, not just again in the four years of college, but also long term. They're great mentors for me now. Uh, and I think one of the things in, in wanting to be a coach was that I wanted to be able to impact the lives of, of young student athletes 
um, through the game of basketball. And, and again, and making that a lifelong relationship and not just a four year relationship. Uh, and that's one of the things for sure that shaped my, uh, my coaching uh, as a coach that I received uh, from the relationships that I had when I was in college. Did you know you wanted to be a coach before you were going to college? Did you learn that when you were in college? When did that, when did that transformation upon what career you wanted to go into happen? Uh, in college, in college, I, I thought I wanted to teach. I absolutely love teaching. Um, well, you are a teacher. Is, yeah, which is coaching. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to be a, a teacher forever. My, my brother and my sister uh, teach. And I, I think I felt as though they stole my dream um, and they were very successful in, in what they do and in what, in, in what they are. Um, I know when I was in college, my college coaches would always tell me, you need to go into law school because um, I could definitely argue my point and I was so competitive um, that they would tease me all the time. You need to be a lawyer, you need to go to law school. And so I think I was able to combine um, all of the things that I absolutely loved. And so that was the teaching aspect of it, basketball, uh, and again, being able to impact the, the lives of young student athletes and being able to do that in coaching, I, I kind of get the best of all of it. I still get to compete, uh, which I absolutely love to do, and I get to impact lives. Uh, and then I get to be around the sport of basketball. And then uh, after graduation, your first job uh, as an assistant basketball coach was uh, where? Let me try to remember. Where was that, coach? <laughs> I think that was at Hofstra University. Uh, it was. You spent four years as an assistant at Hofstra from 2006 to 2010, some really great years for the program. Um, what was that experience like the first time around uh, as an assistant coach in college basketball? Uh, it was great. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Uh, having having the opportunity to step out uh, and, and into this career for the first time and being able to do it with someone that you knew and, and had a long relationship with was also helpful, helpful, for, helpful for me. Uh, you don't understand this side of the game as a student athlete. Uh, I, I think as a student athlete, maybe you think your coaches just show up to practice and we practice and that was it. Uh, and then go on some recruiting trips. And so coming in as a student athlete, there was, there was an adjustment and you had to learn and understand that when you leave practice as a student athlete, that that's not when coaches uh, leave and that's not when coaches turn off what it is that they're doing. And so in those four years coming right into it, being able to, to learn, grow and develop in those four years uh, and being able to do that with a lot of hands-on responsibility, I think set me in the, in the right direction uh, in terms of my career. Uh, Krista gave me a lot of responsibility and she, and she helped teach me throughout that. Um, and she also was, was very tough on me uh, and making sure that I did things the right way and, and that I developed and that I grew. And so I appreciate all of that. And I think that helped jumpstart my career uh, in, in these four years. My experience here was, was amazing. I loved it. Um, who wouldn't want to come to and live in New York, um, which was what I had the opportunity to do growing up down south. I, I hadn't spent much time up here. Um, and so being able to, again, location, uh, the people at the university, which I love, and, and being able to do what it is um, that I wanted to do uh, for a few years. Yeah, your first year, uh, during your four years at Hofstra, you guys went to two uh, WNIT appearances. Then you had an incredible uh, improvement on your th in third year from the second year after a bunch of uh, student athletes graduated. That first year was really successful. WNIT quarterfinalists. Uh, do you have a favorite memory from that first year? Obviously, there was so many incredible wins. I, I was a part of the staff that year as the SID, and I, I remember every every trip that season. It was it was so much fun. Do you have a favorite memory from that year? I think my favorite memory from that year would probably be the the Michigan State game. Um, that was definitely uh, as you talked about, refused to lose by the team. Uh, I think they came together and they just had their mindset that we were not going to lose that game. Uh, that we were going to put everything that we had, uh, you know, on the floor. We we're going to leave it and lay it out there and make sure we came out with a victory. And, and they did just that. Yeah. Uh, low key, the South Carolina win kind of, uh, that was, that was a big one for me. I don't know. I felt like yeah. we were going, going somewhere where no one expected anything of us on short notice in the WNIT. And, uh, it was, it was a great, great night for Hofstra basketball. Uh, so after Hofstra, you, uh, then went to Illinois state. And you started an incredible run of success as staffs you were on. Just, I mean, from NIT to NCAA to Sweet 16s to Elite 8s. 
I mean, it, it was just an incredible run for you being part of staffs that experienced so much success. Uh, and you were working with legends of the game along the way. And when you were at Illinois State, what, what kind of, what was the next step in your career as you developed that into a, an assistant coach? Uh, Illinois State was, was great for me. It definitely was a move that put me outside of my comfort zone. I was moving to a, a part of the country that I'd never been to. I was working with a staff that I didn't know uh, and had never been a part of. And so it, it was one of those moves that you really got to see what you were made of. And I absolutely loved it and enjoyed it. I got to work for Stephanie Glantz, uh, who I think was one of the best in the business. Um, and did a phenomenal job of really teaching and developing me, not only as a, a, as a coach on the floor, but what it, look, what it looked like in recruiting and also what it looked like in managing people and, and the leadership perspective. I think she did a great job of managing and motivating our staff, managing and motivating our players and our team. Um, and I think she did a, a, a wonderful job uh, with that. And, and that was definitely one of the things that I, that I learned from there. But Again, the same with the hands-on responsibility uh, on the floor and off the floor, but really pushing me outside of my comfort zone uh, and growing in all areas. Yeah, and uh, in your two years at Illinois State, uh, your first year there, you guys won 24 games. Your second year there, you guys won 19 games, two WNIT appearances, a semifinal appearance in your first year. What was um, what was it like getting to the semifinals? It was one step further than you got it after your first year. So the, the success was starting to uh, roll even further down. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely phenomenal. It, it just being a part of, of teams that have the desires to, to win and push and, and, and refuse to lose, that's a lot of fun. Um, and, and it takes it to a whole nother level uh, when you're a part of that, when you're when you're part of the same on your staff, uh, being able to take it one more step, one more step, one more step, and to be able to really understand what it takes to win um, is is really special. And, and like I said, I learned so much. Yeah, let's uh, let's go back to the uh, chat window again, Hofstra fans. If you have uh, questions for Coach Danielle Santos Atkinson, put them in the chat window on the YouTube page, and we'll get to them uh shortly uh coach uh, uh let's go back to your playing days do you have a favorite game or memory from uh your florida state days yes um, i'm sorry uh this is florida state this is assistant coach question let's hold off on this one i read it as florida so it's okay. not i i don't want to insult florida or florida state with that okay <laughs> um you're uh, you played at wheeler high school uh in georgia mm -hmm. for those who don't know four former Hofstra coach, Krista Kilburn Stavesky. Uh, what did you learn uh, during high school? You were, uh, you were one of the state's best players uh, that uh, made you know that maybe you were going to be a successful college player. Uh, the, the toughness. I, th I think I was really tough and competitive as a high school player. Um, and, and I had a, a, a really good work ethic on the floor. And so I think for me in, in high school, the, the toughness aspect of it, to where, again, regardless of the circumstance, I was going to work hard, I was going to play hard, and I wasn't going to allow anybody to take me from that. Um, and the competitive piece of, of wanting to win at all costs and do whatever it took to win, I think that was something that was really instilled in high school, is we were never going to give up. We were always going to work hard and work for what we wanted, um, and we were going to give it everything we had. And I think that has been able to, to stick with me throughout my playing days and beyond. Let's uh let's go back to the Hofstra part of your career. We'll we'll return to your career arc in a little bit uh, as we take a break after the uh, Illinois State part of your tenure as an assistant coach. But let's talk about your roster now. Uh, you've had a lot of uh, changes. You've uh, you you played a lot of young people this season. Uh, your freshman point guard averaged over thirty minutes a game. You got her some incredible experience. Uh, all rookie team from the conference. Uh, what did you see from your team as you developed this year? Um, uh, as you were uh, getting in the midst of the season? Yeah, uh, I thought from, from our team, we had a lot of people step up. I, I, I talked about it a lot last year, but we had, in essence, we had 16 freshmen. Um, although we didn't have 16 literal freshmen, we had everybody coming back uh, in new roles. We had a brand new staff, which meant all new terminology, um, a completely different offensive and defensive system. Uh, and it, it was great to see 
how that team brought into that, how that team uh, dove in and, and really took the bull by the horns uh, as we got rolling. And so there was a lot of change and a lot of development individually throughout our players and, and, and throughout, for our team throughout the year last year. And, and as you said, there were a lot of players that, that stepped into those roles uh, and really flourished. And, and Sorrell was one of them. As, as a freshman point guard, as a point guard in general, it's tough. As a freshman point guard, it is really, really tough. Um, there's so many things that you're trying to learn and, and manage and, and do on the court. And when you're still trying to figure it out yourself. Um, and I think she did a great job with that. I think we had a lot of people step up. Uh, we saw a lot of growth in our seniors and a lot of leadership in our seniors this past year, uh, as well as from, from Jalen Hines and, and Ja'Kayla off the bench. And so really excited uh, for what, for how they finished, the things that they were able to learn and do this past year and how that's going to, to evolve this upcoming year um, and the continued growth that we're going to want to see. Yeah, you kind of just touched on your roster both this year and as you move forward. Uh, do, are you planning on only recruiting players with the first name, first name that starts with the letter J? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Are, are, are you planning on recruiting only players whose first names begin with the letter J? You seem to have a plethora of J's on the roster. I have a plethora of J's and we will, I'm sure, be tongue-tied uh, and need to come up with some nicknames uh, as we go on throughout this year, this upcoming year, because we do have a few. So, uh, Coach, you're very active and your program's very active on social media, uh, and especially now in the midst of what we're going through now. Uh, how do you view that as uh, something that can assist your program and, uh, and your thoughts in that area? Yeah, I think social media is great. It, it's definitely a window into the program, a window into who we are uh, as people. Uh, and we want to be able to have uh, the community and fans and everyone uh, see what we're all about. And so I think social media is, is a great tool and something we want to utilize and utilize even more um, in sharing with, with everyone what it is that we're looking to do, um, who we are as people, what it is that we believe in. Uh, we've got a great group of, of student athletes on our team and we'd love for everybody to get to know them. We want everyone to get to know our staff. Um, and again, like I said, get to know what we're all about and, and where it is that we're headed. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. Uh, your great SID, Rachel Vogel, uh, posted a TikTok video <laughs> uh, of your team from your uh, first win. I don't even know if you're aware of this. The video views on this video on TikTok right now are approaching 200,000. And you're the star and you're the star of the video. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think we had some great student athletes in that video with some moves and they were doing a great job. Um, I just, you know, I just wanted to blend into the background as much as I could. I think um, you were in the front though. So, you know, you're, you're the star, <laughs> but yeah, 200,000 views. So yeah, the social media works and TikTok is a whole new uh, area for everyone to uh, get involved in. And uh, yeah. we're certainly uh, excited that uh, we have a uh, TikTok video that has 200,000 views and uh, I'm happy for you that you're the star of it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Let, let's talk about uh, program goals both now, in a year, two years. What, what do you, do you build those out? How far in advance do you build out goals for your team? Uh, whether it's goals with your student athletes, goals with your staff, or just, you know, Danielle sitting at her desk thinking about, you know, in five years, I want this program to advance to the Sweet 16 or something. How, how do you build out those goals? Uh, you know what, we, we build out those goals based on, based, again, based on the vision for our team, uh, based on the vision for the program, uh, and, and based on the, the short-term goals, based on what it is that we have as, as part of the program at the time. So right now we are, and we have put, the, put in those long-term goals of where we want to see this program going. Um, and then we break those goals down as we get closer throughout the year to, okay, here's, here's the expectations of this team this year. Um, we, we've got the long-term goals and we work towards those every single day. Um, and in the short-term goals, now we have those expectations based on what the pro, what, what people are a part of the program, uh, and what that looks like for that year and moving forward. But we've, we've, we've set goals. If you don't have goals and you don't know what you're working towards, and, and we want to know exactly what it is that we're working towards. So, so that we're all on the same page. Um, and those long-term goals we have laid out, uh, we want to win a championship for this program. And, and that is a long-term goal uh, for the Hofstra women's basketball program. And it's something that we want to do and something that we feel that we can do uh, as we continue to work. 
did you feel uh, when you were in the interview process for this job, when you were meeting with uh, Vice President, Director of Athletics, Rick Cole Jr., that you and uh, you both were on the same uh, page in terms of the goals you saw for the program, the goals he saw for the program? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 that's one of the number one things in, in deciding to, um, to, to, to take on a, a program is you want to be on the same page with, with your athletic director and you want to make sure that the, the expectations uh, and those goals for that program are aligned. And, and that was one of the things that, that I really enjoyed about that interview process. And one of the things that I enjoy about working, uh, that, about working for Rick is that he has goals for our program and, and expectations that are in line with, with what I see uh, and what I feel is it can happen with women's basketball. Let's uh, step back to those interview uh, process for a second. Do you remember the moment you were offered the job? Absolutely. Absolutely. Where, where, where were you? Were you, was it face-to-face, -face, phone? What was it? Um, it was face-to-face -face and it was actually on my birthday. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes. So uh, so Rick, Rick made the offer and how, how quickly did you say uh, yes? Um, Rick didn't make the offer. Um, I quickly said yes in my head. Um, but you know, that's something that you go back and it's a family decision with my husband. So we went back and we talked about it and we both quickly said yes. And, uh, you know, together, um, but then that, that very next day we had the conversation, uh, with Rick and, and we said yes, that very next day. That's uh, that's incredible. It must be, must've been an incredible moment for you, uh, in your life and your career, uh, for that first, uh, time you're saying yes to that head coaching position. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was definitely, definitely a dream come true uh, for me and, and one of my goals that I had for myself uh, in my career. Again, Hofstra fans, if you have questions for Coach Santos Atkinson, uh, put them in the chat window on the YouTube page and we'll get to them. Uh, since I already screwed up the one about Florida and Florida State, we'll uh, get back to that one later. But Coach, so after Illinois State, uh, you then headed to Kentucky and this is the next six years win totals of programs you were part of 30 26 32 25 28 and 26 that's just astounding success um uh in its totality and we'll break it down by season in a moment or by school in a moment but uh, what, what was it like being part of a six-year run where you your teams were all NCAA tournament teams and you experienced every level level of success in the NCAA tournament you know, it, I couldn't have asked for uh, better working environments, better, better scenarios, better teams, better staffs. Uh, I was very, very fortunate to work for some great leaders uh, and some incredible head coaches. And that's one of the things that I absolutely cherish and am grateful for. Uh, I worked for uh, coaches that, that definitely had the recipe for what it was for and what it took to win. Um, they were, they allowed me to be a part of that. They allowed me to have hands-on, uh, hands-on parts of what it is that we were doing and, and play a large part in those, in those roles. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that, but to, to be able to be a part of those teams and those programs uh, to have that success, uh, that was incredible. Uh, and, I, and again, I really learned so much in, in those years. Yeah, you were at Kentucky for two seasons, 30 wins the first year, 26 the second year, an Elite Eight the first year, a Sweet 16 the second year uh, at uh, one of the nation's most recognizable uh, institutions. Uh, I'm sure you gained so much knowledge being part of that uh, university's structure, right? Yes, absolutely. It is, in essence, basketball country. They say, you know, University of Kentucky, uh, you're, you're in, in some respects, you're the professional uh, basketball teams in the state. And so it was, it was amazing to be a part of. Um, people, the, the Big Blue Nation love basketball in that town and love basketball in that state. Uh, and as you said, just the structure of it all, of how you do things, the way you do things. Um, I definitely learned a lot in, in, those, in those couple of years that I was there. Uh, and I've and I've taken a lot from that program and to implement within what we do here at Hofstra. Yeah, and then you uh, after Kentucky, you made the move to Florida State. Uh, I guess before we get into the Florida State, uh, was that a tough move for you personally as a Florida grad? I guess is that is that something you think about? Yes, it it was. It was a tough move, and we actually had you know some phone calls and 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 some people. I, I had a few teammates tell me to delete their numbers. Wow. <laughs> 
Um, and all in good fun and good faith, of course. Um, but they really gave me a hard time in that move. Um, but absolutely loved it there at, at Florida State as I did my career uh, at Florida. Yeah, and again, you had incredible success in elite, two elite eights, a sweet 16, and a second round appearance. That first season at Florida State was probably your most successful season as a coach at any level. Uh, one of three elite eights you've been part of, but that season you won 32 games. Uh, that, that's, a lot, that's a lot of wins. Uh, what was that first season like? And to, to, in a season like that, do the wins just start to like, does it feel like you're rolling down a hill in a snowball and it's like an avalanche there you figure you're going to win every game uh the expectation is is to win every game I, I will say that um i wish it was as as downhill uh of a feeling uh as, as you'd say but that is work um and the more you win the tougher it is to win uh because then you have a bullseye on your back and and again playing in the acc is a, is a challenge every single night every every single game um, and so that, again, as, as much as you see that success, it was so much hard work, uh, but it was definitely with a, with a group of student athletes that, that had a determination uh, and had a fire inside of them. And again, with the staff, an incredible staff um, to, to guide and lead that charge. Uh, but it was really, really fun to be a part of. But again, the expectation is to win every game. And so the, that pressure and, 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 the, and the work put that goes into being able to do that, uh, it can definitely be great at times. And the expectation became a reality 32 times that season, which is absolutely astounding. Uh, so you spent four years at Florida State. And then uh, interesting, uh, this, is, this is when your career kind of, I feel like you would say, took the next step. Uh, you joined the staff at uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, and it was a rebuilding program. And I right. feel like that allowed you to gain some more knowledge of an area maybe that you hadn't seen yet. You've been part of multiple successful programs. And this is the first time you really were deep in the weeds with a program that maybe needed your expertise and your success to kind of help that program elevate. Did you feel that too? I, absolutely. And I, and I think you said it uh, I think you really said it very well that that was the the next phase and it was completely unlike any other place that I've been a part of. Um, it was with familiar people. I went there with Lance White uh, from Florida State, who again is an incredible leader uh, and an incredible coach to be able to continue to learn from. Uh, but it, it was a program that we went into and we had a lot to do uh, in terms of really looking to build. Um, and it was much like this year in terms of building that foundation. And we had to and we had to learn that as a staff because you put a lot of pressure and expectation on yourself in that first year uh, and, and you want to see things happen right away but you you've got to remember it's it's a it's a marathon not a sprint uh, and understanding that in that first year and really getting a taste of that in that in that first year at Pitt was definitely very helpful for me and and going into a program uh, where you had to set goals and you had to uh, to lay the foundation and understand it's not all about the win-loss column to start, but how you can gain those small successes and those small victories and what it is that you're doing and making and making sure that the program is always moving forward uh, towards those long-term goals. Do, do you see, did you see a lot of similarities to what you did that one year at Pittsburgh to your first year at Hofstra? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's a lot of things uh, that that you, that you don't see as an assistant coach, uh, as a head coach. And I called Lance White many, many times um, to, to tell him, I understand now when I was, you know, that, that eager, that eager coach um, wanting to do a hundred thousand things in our first year and, and him reminding me and telling me, we don't have to do it all, all this first year. Um, we have to do the things that are necessary to move the program forward and then continue to build and add. Uh, and that was something I really was able to see here at Hofstra in this first year. There's so many things that we want to do with the program and there's so many things that we will do uh, in helping to move the program forward. Uh, but, but in that first year, you have to make sure we prioritize and we had to make sure that we were putting the most important things first, the, the areas that we needed to see the largest growth first. And as we continue to do that, then we'll build and, and we'll continue to bring new things uh, into the program. Again, Hofstra fans, if you have questions for Coach Santos Atkinson, uh, put them in the YouTube chat window and we'll get to them. Uh, we'll, Coach will be here for a few more minutes and we'll uh, try to get to all your questions. Uh, Coach, uh, let's go back. Let's circle back to that Florida State question. Do you have a favorite game or memory from 
I guess it's when you played at Florida. The the question is now reading it is referring to your playing career and just got the school wrong. So okay. do you have a favorite memory from playing at Florida? Um, yes. And one of my favorite memories there is beating Tennessee at Tennessee uh, when they were ranked number one uh, on their who was team. On, who was on Tennessee at that team? That was Candace Parker. Um, wow. And yeah, so that was that team. And th there were a lot of good players on that team that year. Uh, and we won. It was the first time we were we were unranked at the time. And it was the first time that Tennessee had been ranked, had been beaten by an unranked team on their home floor. Uh, and we were, like I said, it was senior night, uh, and they were ranked number one at the time. And we were actually coming off of a win. Uh, we beat LSU at home at our place at home when they were ranked number one. And so those were, you know, back to back games or a span of two or three games there, uh, where we were able to knock off those teams. And it was a great streak for us. Um, and definitely one that I'll remember and, and cherish because our, our team really came together. Uh, in those games, and you, you could see the camaraderie and the work that we put in together, uh, and we and we laid it all out there on the floor. That Tennessee win's got to feel like at, you win a national title, I imagine, right? Yes, absolutely. That like that place. You're in the locker room celebrating like you've never celebrated before. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. We did. I mean, it's they do a great job of creating an environment there. Um, like, like you said, that at the time it, it felt like a national championship environment and a national championship uh, uh, game. And we, we went into overtime uh, in both of those games uh, and, and was able to come out uh, on top. Incredible. Well, let's go back to the chat window and see, we got a question here. Uh, with recruiting decisions, how do you strategize where and in terms of country or parts of the uh, world to focus on? Uh, we want to make sure for us that that we're bringing in the the best student athletes that that we can possibly bring in wherever that may be. Um, there's so many regional regional student athletes that are that are great players, um, and we do feel as though we want to get the best players uh, from our region when we can. But again, we've got uh, connections and, and a network, a recruiting network all over the country. Uh, and we want to bring in the best players possible and, and we'll lean on that network uh, wherever that is uh, in the country. Uh, if, if, we're, if they're great high character people, uh, great, great students in the classroom and good players, regardless of, of where they are, then we want them here at Offshore. And speaking of great players, which your program is uh, in the process of continually bringing in, your program and you uh, do a ton of community service, uh, especially even now during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, can you talk about how important uh, doing the community service and being active in the community, uh, whether it even, it's not even community service, is important for you and your program as you establish yourselves? Yeah, I, I definitely want our team and our, and our program to be one that is out in the community. Um, we are, are so fortunate in what it is that we do and, and what it is that we're given and, and, and afforded here at Hofstra. I always want our staff and our players to, to have servant hearts and we always want to serve and we, and we want to make sure that we're able to do whatever it is that we can do, uh, whether it's to put a smile on someone's face, to, to give to someone that is potentially less fortunate or to, or to just lend a helping hand. Um, we're always willing and, and wanting to be able to do that. Um, we also, again, when I talk about that window into our program, we want to be able to get out into the community and so that uh, everyone gets to know who we are. We want everyone to feel as though they know us uh, on the inside and, and they're not on the outside just watching us, but they have a relationship there. Uh, to when they come to games, they don't just know uh, number 11, um, but they know Jalen Hines and they know her favorite color and, and that she's silly off the floor that that Val Valcourt uh, is the best dancer uh, at Hofstra University. <laughs> um, wow. But that they yeah, but that they know those things. Um, and it's not just their numbers and their jerseys on the floor that they get to know who they are because uh, we've got great high character student athletes on our team. Uh, and we, we want to make sure that everybody gets to know them and everybody feels a part of what it is that we're doing. Uh, because again, the, the community and, and the support of the community is will play a, a vital role in the success of our program. Absolutely. Well said. Let's get into a few fun questions here. Uh, let's uh, favorite player of yours growing up. Ooh, favorite player of mine growing up. Um, there's so many. 
Uh, I, I, how about we talk about a favorite, a favorite program because there's so many. So okay. growing up, um, I absolutely loved watching the, the North Carolina teams play. Uh, I thought they played with so much heart and hustle. They were defensive specialists. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that always stood out to me is, is how hard they played uh, and how together they played. And so absolutely love the, the, the North Carolina women's teams um, as a kid growing up. Did you have a favorite athlete of any sport? Didn't have to be women's basketball uh, growing up that you were just, that was your idol. Um, you know what, let's say, we'll talk since Michael Jordan and, and the last dance oh, is out right now. Um, he was definitely uh, one. And, and again, just because of, of his work ethic and, and, and what he was, was able to do uh, and, and how he was able to do it. Obviously he's naturally gifted and talented, but, but the work that, that went in to getting where he was, um, I absolutely loved watching that. Your favorite meal at a restaurant, what the restaurant meaning? You have a favorite spot you uh, go? Lasagna or pasta for sure. I am definitely uh, Italian is one of my favorites. Um, and so I think, anyway, it's, I think it's everybody's favorite, right? Of course. I mean, who wouldn't want pasta and, and lasagna? Come on now. Uh, so let's uh, touch on your family. Uh, you married Cleveland and your two children. Uh, how important, obviously they that's a dumb way of phrasing it, but Talk about the importance of uh, having them around and uh, being a part of this journey that you've been on uh, for a few years, and especially your two young children who joined the journey recently. Yes, uh, I can't say enough about Cleveland and, and the support that he gives not only to me, but to our family and, and, and allowing me to do what it is that I absolutely love. Uh, to, to be a coach, it takes a lot of work uh, to be a mom. It takes a lot of work to be a wife. It takes a lot of work and you want to be great in all those areas. Uh, and that can't happen if you don't have the support of your family um, and the support of, of Cleveland for me allows me to be great in all of those areas. Uh, and, and he does so much for our family and, and keeping us uh, on, the, on the right page, keeping us together, uh, even there in the crazy times. Uh, he, does, he does a lot there. And so I, I can't thank him enough for that. Uh, he's, he's also, you know, on board and all in, we call him, he's the GM. Uh, he calls himself the GM. I shouldn't say we call him. The GM. <laughs> he calls himself the GM, but from, from the day I met him, it was we and in us and in our program. And when do we play? And, and I've always loved that, enjoyed that, that he was all in with the programs that I was a part of. Um, London uh, is, is getting so big. Our daughter, she's three years old. Um, she is asking me every single day if we can go to mommy's job in mommy's office and she, can we go on the bus and when can I see the girls? And she just loves it. Everything about Hofstra and this program she loves and, and enjoy, enjoys being a part of. Uh, and then Madison got she's, like 15 role models, right? Yeah, she's got 15 role models. Exactly. And when they call on FaceTime, she is just, you know, tickled pink and absolutely, you know, enjoys again, them and, and, and everything with the program. Uh, and then we got a, a seven month old Madison and she's growing every single day. At, at, she's seven months and she's busting out of her nine month clothes. Um, and so uh, again, just being able to have them uh, be a part of this program, uh, working for an institution and, and with people that truly believe in family uh, has, been, has been great for, for our family because that is first and foremost uh, uh, so important to us. Uh, and to be able to co combine uh, work and family as we do what we love, uh, it's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible atmosphere. Well, we have a couple more minutes with Coach. Uh... Coach, this hour's gone uh, really quickly. You're, uh, you've are you been great to chat with. Uh, Hofstra fans, get any questions on the chat window if you have any in the next couple minutes. Uh, we'll get to them before we uh, close up shop here. Coach, uh, your first four years at Hofstra when you were the assistant coach, you worked with some people that obviously are still around and, and have stayed in the college basketball world. Do you chat regularly with those people still as you circle back? Uh, one, of the, one of my all-time favorite people that I've ever worked with, not just women's basketball, is Mike Gibson. Uh, yeah. do, do you, do you talk to Mike a lot and people like that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this business is such a small knit community, um, that when you cross paths with people, it's, it's, it's so rare that you don't cross those paths again. Um, and it's so vital for me that that communication and that those relationships stay open forever. 
Um, but definitely Michael Gibson here at Hofstra, he was, he's definitely um, a, a great person and we do keep in contact, especially coming back. He is still Hofstra pride all the way through and through. Um, and he's been a great support uh, and reaching out and, and again, uh, keeping that communication open and being supportive throughout this first year. But there's, there's so many people, so many uh, people that I've been able to develop relationships with uh, in my years of coaching. And I think, again, that, that's so vital to keep those relationships open uh, and to be able to remain in contact uh, with those people. Uh, do you have a favorite memory from this season, a specific memory that stands out? Was it the win over Hartford for your first win? That's now gotten 200,000 views on TikTok or was it something, <laughs> or was it something else? Um, no, I definitely think that that first win was, was one of the, was a great memory. Um, the, the team had worked so hard over the summer um, and uh, they had, they're stepping into new roles that, that they're so un, unsure of. Um, they worked so hard in the preseason and being able to see it all come together uh, in that first game was, was so much fun. Um, it, was, it was joy and I think it was relief and a breath of, of fresh air after the game uh, and all that excitement and them realizing um, the potential of the team. Uh, and I say that all the time, you know, that, that that team had so much potential and has our, our team has so much potential uh, in it and looking forward to what that what that looks like here in this upcoming year. But I, I think that first game uh, for them and then also for me, my first win as a head coach that that was awesome to see and, and to be able to share that with with that team was really special. And that Hartford uh, team would go on to stun the college basketball world with a win over Stony Brook later in the season when Stony Brook, I think was like 25 and one or some, some crazy record. Uh, so that they, they had, they had a uh, unbelievable win of their own. Uh, let's get uh, one more question from the chat window before we end up. Uh, what have the players on the team been doing in terms of staying in shape and being uh, part of the program uh, during these, uh, the pandemic? Yeah. I, I think one of the things that, that we've seen with this team was, uh, in this off season, you know, that we've seen their personalities come out, they've gotten so much closer, uh, and it's, and it's hard to understand and see everybody is in their separate homes. Everybody is apart. Um, but I do feel like the team has gotten closer in that time because there's been an, an, an essence, some forced communication, you know, I, I just can't take for granted that somebody's right down the hall or that I'm going to see them at practice. Uh, it, it takes a little extra effort and some intentionality to be able to, to have those conversations. And so the team's done a great job of, of really looking to build the chemistry of this team and stay connected in this time. Um, they're doing workouts together on, on, on Zoom calls. I, I see it all the time, you know, they post it. Um, they're doing some competitions amongst the team with each other, which has been really fun to see. Um, and we've had some leaders step up in this time and they're, and they're really holding each other accountable. Um, and so those are, those are some of the things that we really wanted to see in this, in this time apart is, is how can we uh, become more accountable to each other and, and to ourselves? How do we build our chemistry? Uh, and how do we learn how to compete as a team and, and, and grow our competitiveness individually? And so that's something that they've been working on and something that they've been doing. And we've got some, some, seen, some uh, incredible leadership uh, leading that charge. And it's been really fun to see and be a part of. Yeah, it's been incredible. Uh, it's incredible watching our programs, our head coaches and our student athletes really develop a new way of uh, being uh, in tune and learning how to advance the programs and themselves as individuals uh, during this two month stretch. And it's, uh, it's a credit to both our coaches and people like you and our student athletes. Had you, had you ever even heard of a Zoom before uh, March 13th? No, I, I had not Zoomed very much, but I, I have had my fair share of Zoom uh, in these past month and a half or so. Uh, I think I've Zoomed enough for the, for the next year, um, but it, it's a great resource. And I'm, 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 I, I know we will continue to use it and it will forever be a part of our lives from now on. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, it's been an incredible hour getting to uh, talk to you about your career and your time here at Hofstra. Uh, both the first time and the second time and everything in between. Uh, it, it's an honor to have you back here at Hofstra. I, I worked with you in the program the first time around. I'm happy to see you uh, back here as our leader. Uh, thank you so much for the hour. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll chat again soon and uh, good luck to you and stay safe.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen, for having me. I enjoyed it. And, and thank you to everyone uh, for your questions. And, and again, uh, as, as much as we can uh, dive into this time and, and spend time with our families, but also learn and grow and develop as people, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great time to be able to do that. Uh, but thank you for all that you do in, in helping Hofstra uh, stay, stay uh, out there and, and in the community. So we appreciate everything. Well, well said, Coach, and uh, be well, stay safe. Have a great night. Thank you, you too.